name is Beth, and I am a 48-year-old single mom of three wonderful children, and I am also raising my first grandchild. I have a condition called Complex Regional Pain Syndrome, or CRPS. This condition is also known as Reflex Sympathetic Dystrophy, or RSD. I used to be a workaholic. I drove school buses for my local public school district for about 10 years, and then I graduated to um, a college company um, driving commercial buses, and I did that for five years. On February 23rd, 2016, I was driving my regular route when my arm started hurting, and I thought it was nothing, so I kept on driving. Well, a few minutes later, my arm started hurting to the point where I couldn't grip the steering wheel anymore. So I had to call dispatch and get them to send another driver out to take over my route. A manager took me to an immediate med to find out what was going on with my arm and my shoulder. The first thing that the doctor did was do a drug test, which is completely common in all work-related injuries. Um, then they examined me and took x-rays and they determined that I didn't have any broken bones and most likely had what's called tendonitis or tennis elbow, um, basically a repetitive stress injury. So they gave me some pain medication and some muscle relaxers and put me on two weeks of light duty and told me to come in every other day for physical therapy for those two weeks. After six weeks of physical therapy with no real improvement in my arm, and my pain level, which was sky high, um, they decided to send me to an orthopedist to find out if there was anything they could do to fix my arm. So they sent me to um, an orthopedist that specialized in arm issues. This new doctor did another set of x-rays, um, ordered more PT, and ordered an MRI of my arm. The next appointment I had with this doctor, he said the MRI results stated that I had mild tendonitis. At this point, it had been almost three months since I had stopped driving and was still unable to do anything on the job other than sit in an office and look at walls for eight hours a day. I still couldn't hold anything more than a Coke in my right hand. And half of the time, I had to use both hands to keep from dropping it. The doctor gave me orders to go back to full duty at work after the PT that he ordered was done. He told me that if it didn't resolve itself after going back to work for a few weeks, then surgery might be in order. When my manager found out about this full release to duty, she laughed, sent me back to light duty, and had the insurance company call the doctor's office and schedule the surgery to be able to repair my arm. The surgery was done on June 1st, 2016. When I woke up after surgery, the doctor told me that the extensor tendon in my elbow had been fully detached from my elbow and had buried itself in the muscle in my forearm. So there was a little, there was a quote unquote, little extra work that had to be done to, re to do the repair. I went home from the surgery in a great deal of pain. I had pretty good painkillers. Um, one week post-op appointment, um, the doctor took off the bandage, the bandage and the splint that he put on my arm. And I noticed that the incision that he had done in my elbow was about five to six times longer than he had originally discussed with me. And he told me that that was because of the extra work that they had to do. He said that he would be taking the staples out in the next appointment and that I should fully recover. No problem. Um, the next appointment after that, I came back in. He told me, I, he told me that he could take the staples out and take the splint off. I told him that I was still in a great deal of pain. Um, he 
refill the pain med and basically sent me on my way to PT. Um, I did PT for six weeks at the original place that I had done PT after the work injury. And the pain was not getting any better. The flexibility was not getting any better. I still couldn't pick up anything. I was dropping things left and right. And this had me quite concerned. Now, after nine weeks post-op, with the pain levels still being extremely high and my flexibility still waning, um, I was not even able to raise my arm up above my head still. Um, the doctor decided that he needed to switch my physical therapist to a hand specialist. And on the orders that he wrote for that, he put evaluate for RSD. Now, at that point, I didn't know what RSD was. I wasn't sure I knew. Um, but he didn't say anything to me about the RSD. He just wrote it on the paperwork. So I went to the physical therapist, let them do their evaluation, and their evaluation said that I had RSD and that they could fix it. And I was like, great, wonderful, let's get started. Well, after, let me see here, 10 weeks of physical therapy with the new hand specialist, um, nothing was getting any better. Um, the pain level was still the same. I was going home and crying at night, um, wasn't able to sleep. Um, still couldn't move my arm right, still couldn't pick up anything, could barely cook, um, couldn't clean anything. I went back to the doctor, the surgeon, and even though he did not say anything about me having this condition, he recommended a second opinion within his practice. So I went to this second doctor, and the second doctor did an evaluation on me and told me that he was recommending that I do a three-phase bone scan and what's called a stalite ganglion block for confirmation of RSD. And that's what he was going to recommend to my original surgeon. So two weeks later, I had another appointment with my regular surgeon and he ordered the three-phase bone scan and said that he was going to order the stalite ganglion block at the same time so that I would have both procedures done before I came back to him. I went to do the three-phase bone scan. So I went back to the surgeon two weeks after that appointment and he said that I didn't need the stalite ganglion block because the three-phase bone scan had said that I didn't have RSD. Now keep in mind that I have had a physical therapist tell me that I had RSD. My original surgeon ordered a functional capacity test um, or an FCE. And I did that test on November 1st, 2016. And Basically, it does an evaluation of all your physical capabilities um, to see if you can do what your job requires. Um, that test took about two and a half hours. And by the time I was done with that test, I was literally crying um, because it hurts so bad. And I went back to the surgeon about two weeks after that test was performed. And he told me that he was only going to be able to give me a disability rating of 1%. And I was like, okay, I can't even raise my arm above my head. I can't hold anything more than a Coke can. I drop things all the time. I can't grip a steering wheel. How am I only 
incapacitated. This confused me extremely. I told the doctor that I was still having severe pain that was more severe than the surgery um, and much more severe than when I first had the initial injury. So he decided to send me to a pain specialist within his practice. I went to this pain specialist and not only could they in their paperwork not tell their left from their right, they told me that I had a possible condition that I couldn't even pronounce. Told me that they couldn't help me and tried to refer me to a neurologist. Well, the neurologist that they referred me to didn't accept the workers' comp insurance that I was under. So workman's comp had to find another neurologist that would accept my insurance. That took another month and a half. And when I finally got to that neurologist, there was a probably one hour exam. And even though I only saw this man once, um, he didn't tell me I had RSD or CRPS face to face. He said that he wasn't allowed to tell me he had to send the paperwork to workers comp. So my workers comp lawyer at the time was able to get that paperwork from workers comp. And it clearly stated on the paperwork that I have CRPS, also known as RSD. At this point, I went back to my original surgeon and they went to, they sent me to another pain management specialist that was new in the practice. And this pain management specialist exclusively did nerve blocks. And the stalite ganglion block is a nerve block. Um, and he saw me once, evaluated me, said that it would be a good procedure for me to have, and scheduled me for the procedure. I went in for the procedure. They only gave me a local anesthetic in my neck. This procedure is extremely scary because they essentially put a needle about this long about this long into your neck right next to your Adam's apple and it goes down into what's called the stalite ganglion bundle um, which is the nerve bundle that affects either side of your arm or in either either side the left or the right arm and the back of the head and I tolerated the procedure really well um, and about a half an hour after the procedure, my pain level had literally been cut in half. And I was extremely impressed with this. I thought this was like a miracle. I'm like, okay, I can deal with this. The doctor told me that the pain relief could last anywhere from a few days to a few months, but that the more procedures that I had like this, the longer the relief would be. So he put in orders requesting more stand and more blocks to my insurance company. Well, it took them almost two months to get back to the doctor the first time. And he did the second block. And then did a third block about a month later. Now, while all this stuff with the stalite ganglion blocks was going on, um, my workers' comp lawyer was trying to find out what was going on with the functional capacity evaluation rating. Because he couldn't even believe that I was only being rated at a 1% disability. So we managed to get a hold of the original recommendation 
from the company that did the FCE. And it turned out that they were giving me a disability rating of 28%. And my surgeon changed it because he thought that I was exaggerating my pain. Now, with all these daylight ganglion block nerve blocks that I was being given, I had had three and the longest lasting one was probably six days and brought my pain level down from an eight out of 10 to probably a four out of 10. Um, and then we found out that the insurance company wanted me to get what's called an independent medical evaluation. Um, they made the appointment and the doctor for that appointment was over 250 miles away from me. Um, I managed to get my daughter to drive me up there to get to get to the appointment. And that appointment lasted for almost three hours. Um, they asked questions that no other doctor had ever asked. Um, it was the doctor and her fellow. Um, they examined me from head to toe. Um, they requested tests that had been run, um, the three phase bone scan, the x-rays, all of this stuff. And she came back in after running through all my medical records and going through all the tests and doing her exam and she literally came back in the room and said, okay, well, you definitely have CRPS and all of your doctors up to this point have screwed up. And I said, how, what do you mean? And she said, well, the most likely cause of your CRPS is nerve damage to your elbow when the surgery was done on June 1st. And keep in mind, this was sometime in March. No, it was in May of 2017. So it had already been a year. And she told me that the minute I started complaining of pain that was not equal to the surgery pain that I should have been feeling, my doctor should have started me on aggressive treatments with stalite ganglion blocks every two weeks and extreme physical therapy to be able to possibly stop the CRPS. When I find this, when I found this out, I cried. I was like, this could have all been avoided. I could be back at work right now. One of the other things that this doctor said to me was that the stalite ganglion blocks did not seem to be helping. Um, and that I should not do any more because they were pointless. Um, I had one more scheduled and she said I could go ahead and do it just in case and that she would be sending her paperwork to Workman's Comp. Um, about two weeks after that um, I went in for the last Stanglion, Stay Like Gangling Block and it went all wrong. Um, the procedure they did the same procedure that they always did, the same procedure that they had done the three times before. Um, but this time when they stuck the needle in, when they got it far enough, um, it started to be excruciatingly painful. And I had pain suddenly going down into my left arm. And I told him it was hurting 
he pulled back the needle a little bit. He went ahead and injected the medicine. And it was, it felt like they had pinched a nerve somewhere. Um, but they said that the feeling should go away. Um, and I checked out and I went into the restroom. I came back out of the restroom getting ready to leave and the nurse that had been in there for the procedure came back, was waiting outside the restroom for me and asked me to talk. And I started talking and she noticed that my voice was very, very hoarse. Essentially like it is now. Didn't used to be like that. And she said that um, it should fade. And if it didn't fade, to call us back. Um, and I was like, okay, well, it'll probably fade. I'm not going to worry about it. I went home. And three days later, I am sitting here in complete excruciating pain from my right arm to my left arm to my shoulders to my lower back. Um, it hurt to breathe at that point. Um, my voice still hadn't changed back. Um, my face had started swelling. Um, I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I did an emergency appointment with the pain management specialist who had done the stale like ganglion block. And he saw me. He said that it was all normal and gave me a shot of Toradol, um, which did help the pain for a little bit, probably about two hours, long enough for me to get home and relax a little bit before the pain started coming back. And in the next little span of time, um, the doctor who was doing the stalactite ganglion blocks said that he could no longer see me because they were evidently doing no good and that was what his specialty was. Um, the orthopedist said that there was no reason for me to come to keep coming to see him because it was no longer a bone issue. And I suddenly, still on Wartman's comp, still in a lot of pain, have no doctor. So I called my lawyer and told my lawyer what was going on. And my lawyer decided to ask the insurance company if it would be possible to have the doctor that had done the IME be my regular pain management doctor. Now it took them about two months to respond to this, but they responded and they said yes. And I was like, okay, hallelujah, thank goodness, get me back up there. So they got the appointment, and it was probably about eight months between the first time I had seen her for the independent medical evaluation until I came in as an actual patient. And the first thing she did was have a uh, cervical MRI done because she wanted to make sure that um, there wasn't any other reason for my pain in my upper body. Um, which there wasn't. And then she started having um, me go through med regimens for a couple of weeks to see if it started to help. And the one thing that she wanted to make sure to do was to take me off of all the op opioids, which was perfectly understandable. I'm willing to go for it. So she put me on this drug called LDN, which is low dose naltrexone. Can't take opioids with it because they don't work. It, it has a receptor in it that blocks them. Well, to this day, my pain level is still probably a 7 out of 10 on average, but I'm taking 2,400 milligrams of gabapentin a day, 4.5 milligrams of LDN a day. Um, I am on 
um, four milligrams of tizanidine, which is a muscle relaxer. Um, I am on uh, Cymbalta, um, 30 milligrams twice a day. And I can standardly function. Um, I still can't pick up anything. My grip is still not there. Um, I still can't lift my arm past this point right here. Um, I still bruise really easily. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And as you can see, I still have massive swelling in my face. And this part of my face sags. And my voice is always hoarse. This is all a result of the last stalite ganglion block that I was given. Um, now, none of these doctors have taken responsibility for anything that they did. They're not willing to admit any mistakes. And um, there aren't any lawyers out there willing to sue this practice um, because many of the lawyers take their accident patients to this practice for um, injury, um, like car accidents and stuff like that. Um, so it, I'm pretty much stuck. Um, the workman's comp say, uh, settlement went through in August of last year. Um, I have filed for disability. Um, and I find that working with dogs, um, gives me a, a purpose again, I guess you'd say. Um, so I am training my own service dog and, um, I'm raising my grandson and I help take care of my mom and my daughter is here, um, full time to help me. Um, my pain has now traveled from my upper body down my right hip and my right leg. Um, so Walking is painful, um, but luckily I can still do it. And I think that helping, training the dogs helps me stay as active as I can be um, because I refuse to let this disease control my life. Um, thank you for watching, and this is my story.